Get ready. We read to it. Intro. Hmm? He's ready. Intro. Oh, call unto me, and I'll answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things, hidden and fenced in, that thou knowest not. Well, he's going to show us what they are, so they won't have to be know us not. It will be we have gained more knowledge. We have gained more understanding. I am Reverend Bob Butler from the Copy and Praise Fellowship, who we've been sponsoring this January of 1987, and Kendall's been with us from the start, taking a few times off when he takes a vacation, uh, like he has done a few times. And uh, Reverend Kendall Hedrick from Last Adam Ministries, not the Fourth Adam Ministries, in fact, I don't know anybody's got one of those. Not even a second. <laughs> Not even a second. And uh, we're here to share with you. We're having a discussion about our intimacy with the Godhead, including Jesus, who's where we started. And uh, this is different than a lot of the programs we've made. We've shared scriptures with you, uh, and we'll probably share some more uh, as we go through here. But we're just having a discussion between us, of all the benefits and and kind of a timeline of sorts uh, of where we're at on this intimate relationship with the Godhead. And uh, how do we get the intimacy growing in our lives? I mentioned in the last session that when you become born again, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, personal Lord and Savior, not corporate Lord and Savior, personal Lord and Savior, that's your first step in your intimate walk with the Godhead. Jesus Father God, and the Holy Ghost. But the next major step is you have to, by your own premonition and everything, decide that Jesus is going to be my Lord. I, I want him to be my Lord. I'm tired of the way I've been living. I'm tired of everything going around. I want him Lord of my life. You know what a Lord is? <laughs> Look it up in your dictionary. Find out what Lord is. And uh, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Look it up. Uh, and that's what he is for us. He's Lord of our lives. Now, we don't always do everything perfect. Don't get the idea that because he's Lord of your life and because you're a Christian now that all those have ceased. Well, I've got news for you. They haven't ceased. Now, uh, last session, uh, Kendall was talking about learning. And I wanted to bring in some uh, information about that. But I'm going to move it back. Let him go back to him. Uh, let him elaborate some more on that and then we'll bring in these other thoughts that I shared with him that Jen Jerry would have had had been here but he's goofing off teaching somebody else the word of God yep we'll, we'll get him back one of these times <laughs> yep uh, here again there's there's a difference between learning and developing yes uh, we, we learn something we see something and then we need to begin to use it that's to develop key. it uh, we we can read. Um, I, I was actually thinking of different people and the, and their, the way that they've gone through life, uh, but we, we read the scriptures, and and we see the name of Jesus. We see how how it was used in the in the, in the gospels. We see how it's used in the book of Acts. We see how it's uh, how it's used in the in the epistles. We see the, the people that that moved in it, but until we step and begin to use it and allow the Spirit to to bring us into situations uh, and experiences and begin to do it, we have not developed it and it hasn't become a part of us, uh, an integral, intimate part of us until we have matured and, and have used it again in the last program I was talking about the, the first hundred or first thousands you do something after that then it you, you become mature in it you become uh, seasoned in it I, I have a perfect example for you because it's you okay <laughs> when you started in your blacksmithing adventure mm -hmm. uh, you asked me about metallurgy because mm -hmm. you're working with hot metal cold metal and not metalist, neither one. And yeah. and I gave you to use and look my metallurgy book from when I was in engineering. Yep. And you took it home and you read it and you gave it back to me and you said, now I have some knowledge mm -hmm. of this iron or this metal, steel, whatever you're using mm -hmm. in your 
blacksmithing. I says, now I've got some book learning knowledge of what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Then you got your blacksmithing equipment and you started making it practical. Mm -hmm. I know to this color and do this stuff, I can do this with it. Right. And it's not gonna destroy it. Right. So there's your practical. You got the book learning, mm -hmm. but to you the book learning wasn't gonna do you a whole lot of good unless you knew how to use it. Right. And that's where a lot of Christians are with this Bible that we have. Book learning, book learning is good. The the, the letter kills logos, but we we need to we need to know how to use it. Once once you be again, okay, like something. Once you get into it, then uh, you can tell. Uh, I use a lot of junk. You know, <laughs> part, part, actually does <laughs> part, parts that have fallen off or been taken off of equipment, uh, and when you get into that, then you're getting into a lot of alloys. Yes. Uh, and, and yet some of it, you can tell by how it reacts to the yes. heat, what, what, it's, what it is because of the different properties. First start out, um, okay, you know, you're just beating, you don't have an understanding of it. Uh, you, don't ha you don't have the feel for it. The practical Maturity side Maturity comes, <laughs> uh, again, uh, I, I can walk somebody through it and say, okay, pull that out and hit here. You know? uh, and, and the first time through, they're not as good. The second time through, they hopefully will get better. Some some of them don't, but but you know, some people some people will never be able to develop certain skills. You the pulled it thing. out too quick and it wasn't hot enough. It, it was. That's right. <laughs> you you, you got to hit it where it's red, you know. Uh, and some people have some people have difficulty with that. Uh, yes. It needs to uh, the plasticity, you know, needs same to be thing. there. Uh, the same thing is true with this. You need to to know. Uh, a, a case in point, back years ago, we were having a, uh, uh, we had a, a ministry weekend, and we had a singing group came in, there was two guys, and I think they maybe had some other instruments along, but there was two guys played guitars, especially, they were the kind of the leaders of it, and they, they were singing, and everything was going along. Well, um, we, we, were, we were singing some things, and we got, we had had a, a, a joyous, boisterous time of, of praise and worship, and then it got kind of mellow, and, and, and God began to do some things, and, and it got real heavy. Uh, it settled in, and just got the, 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 the atmosphere had changed, and it was, it, it was calm, it was peaceful, and, and God was moving in a, in a different way. It, again, differences of administrations. We were talking about different, different ways. Different ways to move, to, to touch a different group of people. And, and these, these fellas had never been into that before. Um, and, and they didn't know what to do. And so in, in, the, in the midst of this calm, peaceful, heavy, weighty atmosphere, they, one of them finally said, well, let's just clap to the Lord. Well, that was not the, the time in the past. The time worked. had passed to clap. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the time to do something else. And, and, and that atmosphere just, just lifted and, 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 and you know, uh, because I, because God has an order for doing things. Because God has an order for doing things. He has a um, one of the fellows that I've been running around with now. Is, it talks about a, uh, there, there are certain protocols. There, there's there's protocols the way that you do things because if, if you we can't take the second step first, you know <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. But uh, so I went to them afterwards and I said, okay, you remember how that felt when you got to that place. Uh, you, you remember how the atmosphere was. I said, that is not the time to clap. Well, okay, I, I gave them some knowledge. Hopefully then they would have used that. And then, uh, again, as we, as we learn and we grow, as we get into those situations, you can begin, again, it's a spiritual atmosphere, but our soul and our, uh, and our flesh are reacting to it. And, and the way that we sense that and the way that we we react to that uh, changes what's going to happen. See, you're telling me what uh, I perceive as, 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 a, as a praise preparation mm -hmm. to getting into the point where God says, I want you to worship me. Mm -hmm. it, when, when you worship me, I will return something for you. Mm -hmm. and, and we have been in meetings and seen things happen where we, the praise and worship, I mean, the praise was terrific. 
and then you move over into the worship side of it and, and then things you you notice the shift mm -hmm. I mean, even in your flesh flesh body you'll notice that something is different and you will realize you're now you're going to worshiping mode. Well, first of all, in the worshiping mode, you don't sing praise songs. Mm -hmm. You sing, you worship the Father, right. and, and you pray, sing worship songs to Him. And when you do that, then then other things materialize in the natural that come from a spiritual base because mm -hmm. God is a spirit, right. and everything He gives us is initiated from the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. Well, praise is not a spirit thing, uh, in, in the sense that when you praise praise him, you, you, you praise him for who he is. Mm -hmm. But you don't expect him to come back and do some supernatural event during the praise session. You're talking about protocols. Mm -hmm. God has a protocol. Uh, when you get in the being mode, you can expect him to show up and something happen that may be supernatural. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> I've been in a lot of meetings over the years because I'm not a spring chicken. I'm an old duck. <laughs> I ain't gonna touch that. <laughs> I'm gonna let that. I apply. just I just threw that okay, out there okay, for right. conversation piece. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, in these meet, a lot of times we never get past the praise stage. Right. We praise, and God's sitting there in the wings, just figuratively speaking. He's mm -hmm. sitting there in the wings, just waiting to come in here and say, oh, <coughs> "I want to do this for them. I want to do that for them." But. Mm -hmm. Their intimacy level from praise to worship hasn't been developed. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times, uh, the time the pastor has something to do with that. Uh, a lot of things. And and because he is the controlling factor of a congregation or a particular church where you're at. Now, that other meetings where it's not church, and we have been to, you and I both know, it's easier in those kind of meetings to get to the worship mode and have God do stuff. Yes. Not all of them, but... Not all of them, that's right, not all of them. Yeah. But but we've been in, in meetings where the churches weren't, they weren't the instigating force to bring this group together. Mm -hmm. uh, ministries uh, have done it. And uh, so this ties in with what you're saying about growing up in our relationship intimacy with the Godhead because as we grow up we're going to start looking for more of this worship God's presence mode where, where we actually have manifestation in the, from the spirit realm into this soulish realm physical natural realm where we live mm -hmm. you expect you want to see people supernaturally heal get in a worship mode sometime no, that's not the, you mentioned earlier, Jesus healed, but he didn't heal everybody the same way all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same way with the supernatural. Uh, we were just talking, my wife and I were just talking to somebody, not to that has been healed. Mm -hmm. But it took a period of time. And she, this woman that was telling us this, it is not a novice. She's an old time Christian. I mean, old time, she's been a Christian for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and she knows some things. So when she had the attack of the devil, she immediately went to the word to, to counteract what was happening. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and she realized that she could not expect a split second instantaneous happening and for healing. It wasn't going to happen that way. And she said a lot of people, uh, when they come into a healing service, they expect to walk out supernaturally instantaneously healed. And my comment to her was, if they're not a Christian and God wants to minister to them, he may do that. But for the Christians going up to get prayed for, for healing, it may be a period of time for that healing to manifest to the total length of uh, believe and confess till you know and possess. When you know that you have it, you no longer need to pray for it because you've got it. You're, now you need to control it and walk in it. Uh, Mary and I are going through things all the time, <laughs> not that we like to. And we're back to what Jerry said, and you said just a minute ago. You, you got to learn to walk through these things as, that you've learned. Mm -hmm. Peter Peter gives us a little insight into that in in First Peter, <coughs> in in First Peter the uh, second chapter, I believe it is about the second verse, mm -hmm. the third verse. He says that 
So you, therefore, as newborn babes, mm -hmm. desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when, when you get over into, and since Jerry's not here, I'll use his scripture. <laughs> when you get over in into in Second Peter, uh, he highlights it more. <laughs> uh, he kind of he kind of a little bit, and and he says, you know, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises. They've been given to us. You know, mm -hmm. we ha we have been given those promises, that you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the own in the world through lust, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and add to your virtue knowledge, and add to your knowledge temperance. And add to your temperance patience, and add to your godliness, and add to your godliness brotherly kindness, and add to your brotherly kindness charity or love. Uh, for if these things be in you and abound, they shall make you that you be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I, there's no Christian wants to be barren and unfruitful. <laughs> no, not in the right mind. I mean, you know that that's that's, that's part of being a Christian. But most times. Uh, where the rub comes is they don't want to add to these. Yeah. Uh, I've arrived. I've arrived. I've heard that. Uh, you know how many times? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not so much. You know, but but you have a, a Christian and and you start to teaching something and they say, well, I've heard that. Oh, okay. What are you doing? With then that? yeah, why why is not working in your life? You know, uh, there, there's more than hearing it. We develop it. We add to our yeah. faith virtue. Exactly. We add to yeah. uh, we add to our virtue you know, knowledge. We, we add to our experience. We, we, we don't tear away and tear down what we have, but we add to it, and we walk in maturity, and we, 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 we come back to this and allow the Spirit, because this, you know, this is not a dead word. No, it is Spirit not. Spirit is alive. <laughs> Very much alive. Powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the dividing cylinder, soul and spirit, joint marrow, discern the thoughts and intents of heart, and everything that we have to do, open and naked, to them. This, this, if if I have knowledge of it, and that knowledge is not practiced and and developed, then it's going to be ineffectual in my life. That's right. I will be ineffectual in it because I have not allowed it to, to work out. I've, I've not taken the time to develop and to mature in it. And I, 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 may, be, I may be well developed in one area. But you haven't become uh, intimate to the level that you need right. to make it effective. But, but in other areas, I may, not ha I may not even have any knowledge, let alone any re revelation knowledge, <laughs> or, or have a clue to, to what's going on. And we have a lot of Christians exactly like that, right? Right now, thousands. Uh, you were talking about that that sensation that was in the spirit, and I was thinking about a situation that just happened here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there, there were a couple of people came in to be ministered to, in a, and and I had I actually we don't have time. I, you don't know that you haven't heard the story, and a, and a, it's a good story, <laughs> but uh, I don't want. I don't. It's not a story for everybody. For for everybody out there, but uh, they, they came into the, to this uh, service. Uh, it actually was a, a service just for the for the one person there that needed some ministry, and so they they were taken off over here, and I took off. Uh, uh, it was a young lady and a young man, and so they, as they were the ladies were ministering to the lady over here, and I was I took the young fellow over here. And I'm sitting over here, and I'm we're, we're going through the word, and I'm showing him where you know these signs follow those who believe and. And and the Philippians, okay, here, here's a prayer. Pray this, you know, uh, in Colossians, that uh, as your understanding, you know, that this kind of thing. And um, oh, I don't know, half hour, forty five minutes later, uh, we were kind of cognitive, and you could you could hear him praying over there and talking mm -hmm. and different things. But uh, freedom came, and and it was just bang, you know, it wasn't just bang because. It's kind of like a stick snapping, you know. You bend, bend it, you bend it, you bend it, pop, and it, and it pops, you know. Uh, well, it had popped. It, it, it had pressure on it to where, uh, to where it popped, and, and, and the release was there. And, and I was sitting over here ministering to this young fellow, and he's just, just a year or, or so that he's even been involved in the church. He had not been involved in, in the, the situations that we were involved in at this particular time. Uh, and... Uh, 
But when it happened, there, although we were in the same sanctuary, we were in the same building, we were 30 feet apart, uh, when that happened, he said, well, what was that? Because there was that j just a change in the atmosphere, and everybody realized around him that 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 what had happened, and uh, uh, that comes from to a certain degree. Uh, they had the press in in until they saw that release. Uh, back years ago. Uh, a friend of mine and I were together, and, and we got a, a call for a prayer request, and, and we, we were to pray for a, a person. And so we, we began to pray, and I don't know, we prayed for a period of time, and, and prayed, and, and prayed, and prayed, and prayed, and prayed. I mean, we prayed for half an hour, maybe an hour, I don't know how long it was uh, on the situation. And uh, then, uh, with me at least, I had what we call prayed through. It began, that that burden of prayer began to lift, and and, and I, and so I, I quit praying. And uh, when I quit praying, he kind of did. To the, this friend of mine kind of did too. And I said, "Well, are, are you prayed through?" And he said, "What's that?" Yeah, no. He, he said, "Yeah." And uh, um, so he was mature enough. He was to mature enough. To, yeah, he was mature enough. To, uh, had been. Well, I, I don't know if he'd been to Bible college yet or not, but anyway, he was mature enough. He 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 was saved, spirit filled, and, and and walked in several years worth of stuff. Uh, and and several years later, he came to me and said, "You remember that time when we were praying for this particular situation? You said, uh, or you prayed through?" And I said, "Yeah, I said I remember it." He said, "I hadn't." But it had taken him a period of time to and, realize it, and, and a period of being in other involved in other instances and situations to where he realized I had not met all the criteria in in that particular one. And uh, I mean, we, we we take the. I believe that the Spirit gives us opportunities to learn when when it is not critical. Sure. Uh, when someone's life doesn't hang in the balance, or mm -hmm. when someone's Absolutely. Uh, salvation or whatever doesn't hang in the balance, and he gives us opportunities to learn, and we should learn in uh, in, in an atmosphere, uh, a supportive atmosphere. Uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to learn a lot of this on our own. Unfortunately, we do sometimes because we don't hang around with people that that, that walk in what we're wanting to walk in. For whatever reason, uh, the uh, just the other night at a Bible study was talking about the gifts of the Spirit, and and I made mention as I, as I went through it that the, the ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, these ministry gifts, uh, most times are confirmed by laying on of hands and ordination, and uh, that was just an aside uh, uh, as we were talking about them, and uh, but the question immediately came, well. Uh, what about that? And, and so there was the, the discussion began to come, and I said, "Well, the reason that it's not a lot of times is because the leadership of a particular group is not in the place where they need to be to a release the person to 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 go do what God has called them to do, or to guide them in it, uh, to bring them into the steps of maturity, and and many times." It's again because they want to control it. Number one, you know. Um, <laughs> now, there again, there, there's various reasons for that. Sometimes, sometimes we have the, the person has seen people run off into into foolishness and and, and get off into that. But there again, uh, there should be. If everything was 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 where it should be, we should be in a church assembly body in a building in a a group of people assembled together, the ecclesia, called out and called together, uh, should be in a position where when someone begins to go a certain direction or, or think a certain direction, they can, uh, there again, when, when I'm in a situation that a lot of times in, in a group uh, and I've got people that I know that are there, uh, when something starts to happen over here, I look over there at them and, and most almost the time they're looking back at me and, and we can say, yeah, or mm-mm, you know, and 
and then depending on what's going on, how much. Uh, because you have developed a sense for the, the, what's going on right, at right. that particular right. point in time. And I have, I have checked it. You know, it says that the subject of the spirit of the problem because is the you got because you got other people in the area that are sensing the same thing. They're sensing the same thing, and that that are mature enough that I trust their judgment. Uh, I know that everybody in the in, in the in, well, maybe not always, but but for the most part, everybody in the in the in the surrounding area is realizes brain. something's going on. Yeah. But whether or not they are going to realize whether it should be going on, or whether something needs to be done to step in to change it, channel it, you know, wh whatever needs to be done in that particular situation. And, and you know, again, just just by checking off and and saying, okay, hey, you know, uh, it, it doesn't need to be a big thing. Now, uh, sometimes then afterwards, after a, a particular thing, we will get together and we will uh, discuss it and say we'll think about this or what did you think about that and because it's also a learning experience for the mature person hey, it's a, uh, right. we're all <coughs> everybody in the situation should be learning from the spirit um, and from each other sometimes it's confirmation that you got what you got you're ready to move on to another step or sometimes it's just leading you into the step mm -hmm. for future uh, right. involvement See, these are deeper things than, than where most of the Christian, the body of Christ, is today. I mean, you're talking about meetings where you've got quality people there that have been around for a while, have grown to a point, have, have done the studying part, and now I've walked through what they've learned mm -hmm. to make it part of them, or a reality, and I like the word real, to them to the point where I can use this. I know that God this because there it is. I mean, it isn't a case of, well, will it work this time? It worked that other time, but will it work this time? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have it yet. <laughs> That's right. Uh, one of the questions God asked me as doing this is, what is God's intention for the body of Christ in relation to the world and lost souls? <clears throat> well, it ties in with our maturity, and we'll probably get into more of this as we go through here, because uh, one thing in societies throughout the world uh, the Christians in those communities are actually uh, responsible for some of the stuff that's happening there. As uh, are we in ours. As Well, yeah, I was going <laughs> to take us last because yeah. the rest of the world seems to be more in tune with what God's wanting to do than we are here in America. Now, the church in America has gotten lazy, I think. And, yes. and I, I see it begin up, but, but we've got a time problem also. Uh, we don't have unlimited time to do some of the things God told us to do because right. God has a timetable and the timetable God set is for us not for him uh, he, he doesn't he doesn't get bent out of shape for five or ten minutes going on or something mm -hmm. he's looking at millennia <laughs> I use that as an example uh, so what is the body of Christ supposed to be doing uh, Jesus gave us a great commission I guess we'll have to get into this in the next meeting or so because we're running out of time on this one. But uh, Jesus gave us a great commission. Go right. you into all the world, preach the gospel, get them saved, bring them into the kingdom. Sure. Uh, I was <laughs> I was impressed by God. Uh, something about that too is that he didn't want anybody to go to hell. Nope. But he also, not everybody, all the time, every time, any time, is going to be ready to receive what you have to give them. Right. So, you know, we've talked in times past about divine appointments. Uh, we've talked about when Jesus said, don't pray for salvation for people. Pray that the Lord of the harvest send people at the right divine appointment time to share the gospel with them. Now, I both know of people who have had gospel shared to them and, and they they put up a wall that you couldn't get through. But sometime later, that same person has said, hey, you know what happened to me? I accepted Jesus as my savior. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Well, we've been telling you that for years. How come you didn't receive it back then? Okay, I'll stop and we'll pick it up again next time.